Can you explain the color red to a blind person? Let's say that the person was born blind. He has never seen anything in his entire life. How do you explain the color red effectively in such a way that the blind person would have an image of red in his mind instantly? Could you even do it? Is it a linguistic incompetency? Is it the fact that our language hasn't matured enough to do the task? Are the incompetency stems from the fact that color is nothing but an illusion? Will we ever be able to explain the color red to a blind person and make him see? I personally think that this explanatory gap is our own language incompetency. I also think that the moment we are able to explain colors and pain and make a person see or feel respectively by just using our words, we will enter the next step of the evolution game. What is language? Dictionary describes it as the method of human communication, either spoken or written, consisting of the use of words in a structured and conventional way. In 2001 Space Odyssey, the novel, author Arthur C. Clarke introduces us to a hominid, an ape man in prehistoric Africa called Moon Watcher. I remember a scene where he is sitting sleepless in his mountain cave uh, while his peers are sleeping. He watches the night sky and sits there just dissatisfied. A raw feeling of dissatisfaction, an un unexplainable yearning for something more. But it is exactly that, unexplainable, because he doesn't have the language capabilities yet to communicate or explain that feeling of dissatisfaction to his mates. Sure, if he sees a threat, he could scream or screech or whatever he does to inform others about the dangers, but he can't talk about the profound, vague feelings that it that is taking place inside him. If I feel dissatisfied, I would write a blog or make a video about it and talk about dissatisfaction in a never-ending a paragraph for a video, but even we humans can't pinpoint the dissatisfaction we are feeling by words. Sure, we can say that it is a raw dissatisfaction, but what causes it? What is it exactly? We've come quite far as a species, and I feel language is the most important tool for humans. I place myself in your presence and ask you to shine your light into my heart. There is a short science fiction story written by American author Ted Chiang called Story of Your Life. The story is what the new movie Arrival is based on. It stars Amy Adams and it is directed by one of my favorite directors, Denis Villeneuve. I can't talk about the movie as it just came out, we will be heading into spoiler territory, but I highly recommend you to watch the movie, it is spectacular. But what about the short story it is based on? Story of My Life deals with the power and intricacy of a language. When an alien race initiates contact with the Earth, protagonist Louis Banks is enlisted by the military to communicate with them. The aliens are called heptapods, and the language they speak is classified into heptapod A, their spoken language, and heptapod B, the written language. Heptapod B has such a complex structure that a single semantic symbol cannot be removed without changing the entire meaning of the sentence. When writing in heptapod B, the writer knows how the sentence will end. As Dr. Banks understands the writing system of heptapods, the way she perceives time is affected. Language is like a key that can unlock so many possibilities within us and can even affect the way we perceive reality. Because as you might know, reality is subjective. This is what we can handle, so this is what we have. Have you ever read the great and disturbing novel 1984 by George Orwell? It is about a totalitarian state, Oceania, and its absolute control over its citizens. In it, Orwell describes something called Newspeak. Newspeak is a language system introduced by the government of Oceania to control the thoughts and ultimately the freedom of its citizens. But how can they control the entire society by introducing a new form of language? The aim of Newspeak, uh, the new language, is to eradicate all forms of deep shades from the language. It just has good and ungood. The words with negative connotation is redundant and therefore removed. That's when bad becomes ungood. So what was the purpose of Newspeak? According to George Orwell himself, 
Quote, the purpose of Newsweek was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Ingsoc, here Ingsoc means English Socialist Party, but to make all other modes of thought impossible. Its vocabulary was so constructed as to give exact and often very subtle expression to every meaning that a party member could properly wish to express, while excluding all other meaning and also the possibility of arriving at them by indirect methods. This was done partly by the invention of new words, but chiefly by eliminating undesirable words and stripping such words as remained of unorthodox meanings and so far as possible of all secondary meanings whatever. So control the language and in turn control the people or the system. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rushing or dragging? Rushing. So you do know the difference! Let us assume that we have no word called anger in the English language. Whenever a person who only knows English gets angry, what would he or she feel? A raw feeling of aggression, hate and possibly sadness that doesn't fit anywhere and it is just too vague and descriptive to explain. So by controlling the word, you can control the action and the thought like a switch. There are many languages that are on the brink of their extinction. It is so much sadder than you realize. In every language there are so many unique words and phrases that describe something about the world which can never be described in any other language. So every time a language goes extinct, some of our collective understanding and knowledge about our world goes extinct. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested to further pursue this topic, Vsauce did a pretty amazing video on colors and perspective. I'm including a link here. I also highly recommend reading 1984 by George Orwell and 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. I know the movie is pretty great, but uh, so is the book. Well, like this video if I even did a decent job. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you and see you soon.